We just got our Radeon Vega Frontier Edition card in, which is a pro-targeted card that precedes the launch of RX Vega, the gaming targeted card. We've already run this through a few initial tests, and now we're gonna tear it down and show you what the inside looks like, go through the cooling solution, and then we'll have a PCB VRM analysis from Buildzoid going up within the next 48 hours, if not sooner. So uh, for this card, it was $1,000. We bought it ourselves. AMD did not sample this one to many media, if any media. And uh, that means that this is brought to you by our Patreon backers who have helped when we need to buy samples ourselves. So you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you'd like to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net if you like this coverage and want to support our independent journalism. So starting with the card, on the outside it is an what looks like an anodized aluminum finish and it is a unibody bent finish over the top and on the back the card is actually still quite warm because it just got done with some thermal testing with the stock thermal paste on there. So we have numbers for that already, but not sharing them just yet. That'll come soon enough. Uh, it does seem like the body of the card acts as somewhat of a heat sink though. So you'd probably want some airflow directed on the card to dissipate some of that heat that is accumulated in the shell. But we'll go through the internals in a moment. I haven't actually seen it yet. Big blower fan on the end. This goes up to 4,900 RPM. And uh, it seems to sit in the 40 to 50% range for its RPM when it's under a heavier workload like blender or something that we're having trouble getting that to complete without crashing but again that'll come in the review backside you've got the aluminum back plate with a giant support structure for the cooler and then the vega logo but we can just start tearing it down at this point because the only thing left is rear io and that's all pretty standard so let's start with removing the back plate or the screws in the back plate anyway uh, we've got an led here that has only two indicators on off and then on the other side red and blue and then we have a gpu tachometer which shows the gpu load these screws look to be what size is this tr6 size so we've got a torx 6 size for these does that say warranty void if removed and don't do that and there are one two three four five six of these All right, so that was easy enough. There's your back plate. There are no thermal pads on it. These are bumpers to prevent vibration of the back plate against the PCB and also to prevent contact, although these one-ish millimeter standoffs do a good job of preventing any potential contact anyway, so you won't be shorting anything. And I believe this is anodized anyway, but that's the, that's the back plate, easy enough. So six TR6 screws, and I haven't actually taken this apart yet, so I'm learning this with you. Now we have Phillips, Phillips, all Phillips it looks like, and TR, what are these, five? TR5 up here for that part of the shroud that might not need to come out. Maybe it's for LEDs. And then we have Phillips heads in the back. So I'm gonna get an anti-static wrist strap on just because we need this card and bought it ourselves so it matters this time. Okay, so we've got an anti-static wrist strap on. These aren't 100% necessary, but we've got a grounded mat and uh, no need for a very stupid reason to kill the card, which would be static electricity. So we've eliminated that for the most part. And this is plugged straight into ground as well. So that's all good. These Phillips heads are a PH01 size with the iFixit kit that we're using. I'm just gonna kind of hit all of them about halfway and then go through the rest. Actually, you know what? What I'm going to do instead is remove the four for the GPU because a lot of the time these are connected directly into the only part that actually needs to be removed and then the rest are just for some base plate or something. Whatever. All right, there's the retention kit. The screws are stuck in there, so that's different from the GTX cards we see most often. And let's get these out of there now. These probably hold the base plate in the four key spots against the uh, rest of the retention for the GPU. Does it come off? No. I suspect that these three might be for the VRM fan. So we're gonna leave that off, um, or leave those on until the very last moment. That's looking promising, okay. Okay, so. Let's get 
All right, we're gonna just go ahead and take these out. Place permanent barcode and serial number or product label here. Oops, I forgot that one. Yeah, and like I said, this is the first time we're taking this apart. So it may well be the case that some of these screws do not need to be removed. Oh, there's a hidden screw right there to get the card uh, to release the shroud. But it is, it is easier to just kind of take them all out if you haven't done it before so you can prevent any damage from prying at things. All right, that's, everything's feeling pretty loose now. Another screw on this side, right here. holding us in. Now the fan is loose by the way, so those three are for the fan, which means that you don't have to take them off, but that's fine. Hmm. I don't see any. Okay. It might be an unnecessary step, but just to eliminate something kind of dumb, we're going to take these out. Oh, that's looking promising. By the way, on the front side of this card, there are a couple of screw holes as well that are unused presently. Uh, I'm not sure if there will be partner models of this version of the card. That might be why those would be there, but these right here, um, we've seen them on plenty of cards in the past, but, oh, there we go. Okay. So the secret is to take all the outer screws out. I think we actually jumped the gun a bit. This shell, you can get off just by pulling the TR5 screws, these ones right here, out of the side of the body, at which point you're, you'll release the shell. And then we're just connected by a, an LED cable down there. That I'll deal with momentarily. So here's, everything's gonna be loose because I've taken all the screws out. Um, so giant blower fan, like I said, this is, this is one of the bigger ones we've seen. It also has a pretty high RPM. It's got, I don't, I'm not sure if that's aluminum or not, but got the blue finish on the middle. Uh, I can see the chokes already, two of them. We're gonna disconnect the fan early in this process. Okay, cut that out safely uh, okay large aluminum fin stack on top of a copper plate underneath how do i release this or is it already released oh, is that a bio switch can you get a close on that one that might be a bio switch i'm thinking So if that's a BIOS toggle on a reference card, that's kind of neat. It is a $1,000 reference card, but still would be kind of neat. I believe it might be, but I'm not positive. Uh, Bill Zoid will have that answer for you definitively in his coverage on our channel. So this aluminum sink is... Oh! <laughs> I was just about to say, it's, a, it's definitely not soldered on because I could see the paste, and I could see the paste starting to spread out the sides of it, but it was uh, basically glue. Okay, so huge die. We're going to measure that for you in a second. I know that's been a big question for everyone. Um, let's get rid of this fan. So for my own uh, reference, the fan cable is going through the square-ish rectangle hole that's going to be in the bottom right of the card. So that'll be good for reference. Move that to the side. Move that to the side. Okay, so where are our thermal pads? Oh, that's right, this is uh, HBM. You know, it's been a while since I've looked at an HBM card, so for a moment I was like, where, where's the VRAM? Why am I seeing inductors everywhere? But that's why, it's HBM too. Uh, but it's been so long since I've seen an HBM card opened, the Fury X being the last one, that it took me a minute. So we've got, uh, induct the inductors are contacting through thermal pads to an aluminum base plate. This matte black plate is aluminum. 
and we've got a small fin stack over here through which air will go from the blower fan, mounts right here, and that stack is at the back of the card on top of the display port out, so that's going to heat sink the, the I.O. and also just help spread heat in general from the area. Uh, we've got kind of a ramp up here, which is probably for either acoustics or uh, airflow direction reasons, certainly not for aesthetics because you're never going to see that part of the card. This is fairly standard. This keeps all the air blowing in a tunnel-like effect that direction. Don't need to cool this side of the card, so it is left uncooled directly by the fan. The fan is a squirrel, pa squirrel cage, i.e. blower fan, and does it have any information? 12 volt, 2.4 amps, nothing special. Uh, Delta electronics, and it does go up to 4,900 RPM in our initial testing. So there's the fan, and there's this uh, base plate. These contact these inductors, so inductor contact there, and then, is that inductor contact that, oh, that's the wrong way. So that might, that's actually the, the MOSFETs. Okay, so uh, FETs, inductors, and then some breathing, it looks like for the caps. Um, okay, so let's move this to the side, we've got that. Inside of the shell, nothing special. There's an LED, uh, a board PCB for the LED that's here and also here. And that's all that is. So that can be moved aside as well. Let's look at this part. Aluminum fin stack, flat fins on the top. Makes sense. You don't need any ventilation from the top. So if they can trap it and allow the air to get forced that direction out the back of the case, then all the better. Uh, you can see some of the fin density and pitch here. Fin pitch is standard 90 degrees. Fin density is also fairly average looking. Underside. So the underside is a copper base plate with a copper protrusion. This is all one piece of copper. The protrusion is contacting. Actually, you can see the imprint before I wipe it off. There's an imprint of the HBM right there and right there. So we can see the HBM stacks. And then here's the actual die stack right there. And that's contacting the, uh, the GPU proper with these going through the backside. Now, what is this little protrusion for? I wonder, is it basically a tiny, tiny heat pipe or what? Does this go like this? Oh, I guess I can look at the imprints. Yes, this goes like this. Okay. That looks like the world's tiniest heat pipe over there or something, or just a manufacturing imperfection. I'm actually not, not sure. Um, but we'll, we'll uh, get this thermal paste now off of the card and look at the rest of the important stuff. I think that is actually, that is a heat pipe, in fact, or you know, something like that. So, all right, let's look at the card. I need to get some rubbing alcohol. I've already tested this thermal paste. We'll be putting our own on after it for our other standardized thermal tests. Thermal concrete. Oh, look at that stuff. Jeez. <laughs> AMD doesn't like to put the name on the die, so this will be rather boring if that's the case again. But we already know what it is anyway. So all we really need to do is measure the die and then do a separate video on the power and VRM layout. All right, let's measure this die. Um, no words on it. So we're just going to go straight to measuring the die. And the uh, lower two parts, that's your HBM stacks right there, all 16 gigabytes, so 8 gigabytes per stack for the HBM. And then there's the actual Vega die. The digital part of my digital calipers is not working. I'm going to try and be as accurate as I can here without uh, scratching or anything like that. So if you zoom in down where the calipers are touching the die and then show the millimeter reading, everyone can see it's roughly 20 to maybe 20 point something. And now the other side, so you can see there that's about 20 
25 to 26. Each tick is one millimeter. And now for total package height, which always interests me for modding, I'm gonna be a little careful with this measurement. We can subtract the PCB height. So it's not gonna be the most accurate, but it'll be close enough. So our PCB is about one, one millimeter thick. So we're gonna subtract that from the die height. Maybe this, this side's gonna be easier. Okay, package height off of the PCB. Let's call it a bit extra because I can't quite touch that. Somewhere in that area. Uh, and then for the total package size, so counting the interposer, we're at 30 by 30. So this is a 30 by 30 pack die. This, uh, this entire width by this entire height is 30 by 30. And then if anyone's curious, just go ahead and measure the HBM. 10 by 11 or 12. Okay, so that's all the measurements. So we're 10 by 11 or 12 on that. Uh, let's, let's call it 12 on the HBM. Now let's, let's do the mounting hole distance next for your, you liquid coin enthusiasts. So we're at 60, 1, 2, 3, 4. 64 is this square. We'll find out, I guess. So 64 by, I'm gonna rotate this so everyone can see it. One, two, three, four, is that really five? That sounds odd. What's that say? One, two, three, four. That looks like 64 to me. Yes, that's 64. The question is, is this also 64? 64 by 64, there's your mounting hole difference. If you wanna liquid cool this, that is the answer. Uh, that's it for this one. This is as bare as it gets. This is the Vega card uh, Frontier Edition FE. So Vega FE, we've got full benchmarks on it coming. Hold on to your purchases before you see that. They will give somewhat of an indication to RX Vega, but it's not RX Vega. So we'll have to test that separately when it actually ships. But that's what we have for now. So you've seen the die. You've got all the measurements for the Mounting holes for liquid cooling. You have the measurements for the die size. Rough measurements for the die height, but don't, don't go mass produce water blocks based on those numbers. Um, and VRMs coming separately along with testing. We're probably doing thermals, power, and noise first, and then gaming immediately after that. So do subscribe to the channel if you are not, so you can catch all that coverage as it goes live. And if you want to help us out directly with this type of thing in the future, please go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. A lot of these measurements in this video were suggestions from the community because they wanted to know, you all wanted to know what the different die size measurements, mounting hole measurements, and things like that were. So we do listen to your suggestions for these. And thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.